actually I found one mortified body in Germany who was uh, willing to sell, to type test the software mm -hmm. on a difficult application. I wonder how they can do that. They only can do that while also looking at your quality system aspects. <coughs> Um, so these are the different routes, the annex routes to your city mark, and but still it also applies that you always need to meet the essential requirements of your, uh, of your of the directive. The directive has an annex one, which sets generic requirements to your product. And basically that is what you take off on your declaration of conformity, and that's the basis for city markers. Um, what is the difference between uh, approval done by notified body for the support six and evaluation and surveillance of notified body. What's the difference? Down below. Yeah, I see. Oh, okay. Uh, this is um, this constellation. Um, <coughs> um, this is design and manufacturing. Full quality system addresses design of a product and manufacturing. And this is basically detailed, uh, detailed out here. The, EC, the type examination is evaluating the design. Is it designed correctly? And these uh, routes, you always have production quality assurance. There you have to uh, have your production process mm -hmm. And that's easy if you make a physical product, then you have designed the product. And, uh, for instance, the hip implant. You design your hip implant, and there you have a facility, a manufacturing facility, for producing your hip implant. So you can switch that. This is relates to production. And production of software is fairly limited. That relates to compiling the file uh, and actually putting it on a CD or distribution. Okay, um, so if it is a medical device, you should get acquainted with the medical device, <coughs> which basically is what it boils down to. You need to take off the essential requirements of the product. Annex one of the directive is the important. Uh, the directive requirements of a very very general, very vague, sometimes difficult to interpret. And that's why harmonized standards come along. And that's why you need to apply to specific medical device mandated standards related to software lifecycle, the EN60, 203, and 4, usability standards, but also clinical, because your device has a clinical functionality. So you need to substantiate that the claims are actually made. You can build a software and market it, but does it do what you need to do? How to validate that? So you need to do some sort, do you need to do a clinical study? Maybe. Or do you, definitely you need to do a literature search on what is the clinical functionality of the product and how can I guarantee that it actually does what I hope it does? For example, if you have the uh, Dr. Robert show the app that can take a picture of a spot <coughs> on your skin and then determine the uh, probability of cancer, clinical evidence would be that you have some way to substantiate that the algorithm that you use is relevant, clinically relevant for determining uh, this, uh, the chance of, uh, of uh, melanoma. If you just say, well, uh, I think that there is a correlation between the size of the mole and the, uh, the chance of melanoma, that's not sufficient, then you may need to do a clinical trial. That's a good question because what you need to do is you need to go through the so called process of clinical evaluation, which means that you start to look for relevant sources. Then, based on these relevant sources, you say, Look, this is what I can substantiate. This is what my product intends to do. Does that overlap? If not, there's a gap, then I might need to do clinical trial to close that gap. But if I can fully substantiate the functionality, for example, by saying, Well, Somebody else is already doing this with software that does it exactly the same way as I do, and I can prove that. Mm -hmm. Then you could say, well, I don't need to do the file to substantiate. Yeah, but you're saying something very, uh, well, you're using, saying that it does something exactly the same with software. That is actually where you enter 
if you only give like a, an analysis of the data, such as your demand and the ECG analysis, um, and that has been done over many tens of years. With, in yeah, equivalence is the buzzword. Yeah. You need to justify the term technological equivalence. <laughs> That, that, that you need to provide that the way you implement it, that uh, you can use that uh, the available literature. Yeah. So, so, for example, if I have, um, so if I have a, um, a questionnaire for um, from, that helps me identify pain, so yeah. some type of pain, and the gold standard for identifying the type of pain currently is a physician diagnosis. Not nothing technological okay. here. I, I, I place that questionnaire on, uh, in, in an app or whatever, yeah. calculate something, so well, very fancy, that may be very fancy because we will be remembering the in the first place. Um, then I refer to the, the, the wall standard with literature stating that this questionnaire is accurate. Yeah. Is that enough? Or is it I don't want to say what it depends, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> that is what it's up. 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 If you would just make it a paper question that was available on paper and build it into an app, then the, 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 the software program, the standalone MEDEF, might argue that it is not a medical device because you just make something electronically but it's already validated available on paper. Okay, but okay, the, it's the directive, the subsequent status, that's, that's important. And then working in your project, and change control. So maybe if the product is on the market, change to the product doesn't have an effect on the performance of the product. If you change in a uh, probably kind of clinical impact, so all assess all these processes. So that's all, and this is all very a quality system dimension. If you outsource software verification activities in India test house, have control of the subcontrols. Do they do what they do? Have they a system which matches your system? <coughs> uh, bringing the product on the market in Europe requires to meet local language requirements. Typically, user interfaces are in the English language, which is good for the UK, but not good for Germany. So deal with that and only release in the App Store in Germany if it meets the German language requirements. Uh, Medical device directive, but uh, it's also the labeling directive which applies, or the e-labeling directive, the data protection directive. And so it's not only medical, some others can as well. And if you bring the product on the market, uh, then, like, then you are likely the manufacturer. And the manufacturer entity needs to be established. So you need to subscribe to ICJet, I'm the manufacturer, and I bring this product onto the European market. Yes? The uh, question about the EU language requirements, because uh, very often with all our types of uh, software, you can notice that the English version is a lot more, uh, well, say the, the language used is a lot better than the Dutch translation uh, yeah. version. Does it, so does this rule say something about the quality of the translation, or only about the fact that it needs to be translated into that language? <laughs> <laughs> My physician would say, what do you think yourself? <laughs> I think it, it's important to, if you provide a product in the Dutch language, it makes kind of sense with your Yeah, but it's, it's mandated by the Medical Advisor Directive that you need to provide it in the Dutch language. And of course, you can always build in the language switch option for the user to go to English anyway, if it's more convenient. It's also a matter of control over subcontractor, because a translator, a translator is a subcontractor that you need to control for quality services. So you have a bad translator that will produce bad translations, then something is not going right in your ability system. Yeah. Uh, one question. If your client says he prefers to have it in English, you still must you still provide a translation. <coughs> you are the manufacturer and you must meet the regulations. And so to use it to the user to misuse the Dutch language requirements. <laughs> 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 a question on the manufacturer's application. If you basically as a company outsource the whole manufacturing procedure, are you still the manufacturer? You say the outsource the, the production procedure. For the manufacturing procedure. You basically are giving your reference design, you're doing it. you have the first thing, you have to be to an OEM manufacturer. Yeah, you can say. 
I can be a manufacturer and come and make, make an uh, extra machine. As long as I outsource everything to other parties and, have con and can show that I have control over these parties, that, they, that I have control over the cycle, then one person can be a manufacturer. Okay, here are the standards. This is uh, the, an app is software. So as a minimum, a number of software standards apply. And this is the, the 6234 medical device software life cycle. This is the software requirements uh, through, throughout the whole life cycle. So basically it's, it's the structured, it's the fee process alike a software model you have. Uh, the software the app has a user interface for which usability requirements apply. So um, um, and it, uh, so these are the, the core software entities. Important and driving in all this is the risk management process. So if you build your product, what are the risks of the product, what mitigations matter to work and need to implement, and are they correctly implemented? And this is also the quality system dimension. And here, the clinical evidence. So your product has a clinical functionality, and how can you guarantee that the clinical functionality is met? There's a uh, guidance document, a letter guidance document, so that addresses the literature search, what, you, if, what data is available, or do I need to do a clinical study, or do I need to do And here come the labeling requirements. Medical device, the, some, some, some labels need to be in the product, and some labels and some information needs to be in the IFU. Medical devices come <coughs> with an instruction for you, and how to get an instruction for use in your app. You can't build in a booklet, uh, so how to deal with that? It also comes through this one, the electronic instruction for use. So to a very large extent, um, and based on the usability requirements, your, your app will be self-explanatory. But still, you may need to have an instruction for use. So build it in, in your product, refer to your website where you have a PDF in local language available to download. That's, that's how it's <coughs> but you can only use e-label if um, your device is intended to be used by professionals. If it's used for a lay, intended for lay use, you need to supply it in paper. Yeah. According to the 207 Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. <coughs> but how to deal with that in practice? That's the thing, that's the thing that challenge we're going to Because in app is in the, in, uh, ends up in the, in the, in the app store, you... Um, don't know where it ends and how to physically send over an IFU. But that you can deal with it as part of an introductory screen, or one of the screens, and you can say, well, we provide a local language, or you, you can provide IFUs, give us a ring, and we'll send you an, an IFU. But you want, this is indeed, this is kind of not correct with the uh, intent of that directive. Are these uh, titles for free? Can you download them like this? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Standards you need to buy. Standards you can buy here at the various institutes. Um, where you can buy them really cheap is in Germany. The German uh, funding mechanism of standards is totally different than in Europe and other countries. And they get them very free. But then you need to speak. Okay, um, well, what, in practice you will maybe dealing with, with a number of challenges. Uh, in Agile you may have already built your app and all of a sudden say, oops, it's a medical application, what to do now? It's running, we have it available, and all of a sudden this nasty medical device software server <coughs> kicks in. How to deal with it? Um, it's also if the app, you know, this, this is more synonymous, that it's already available in the app store. Um, and, and this is something you will be facing with, and may be facing with. The rigid requirements for medical device software, though very, from their intent, very, very structured way of software development, may not fit with your process there. So there you need to do some sort of gap assessment and, and argue why you still meet the intent of this time. The, 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 the standards are basically voluntary, you can come up with other means to comply with it, but still it should be closely aligned to 